Behind me is a 1967 Chevrolet Caprice Lowrider. This is my cousin's car and it's in for some maintenance, some long due maintenance. And I figured, why not do a video where I explain how to do a, a general maintenance, I would say, on a lowrider. So yeah, it's on the list already. Let's get started. So the first thing we did is drop the oil on it. We're gonna put a new filter on it too. We're running a Wix filter right here and uh, write the date on it and the milliage so you know when was the last time that, that it was done. That will help the next mechanic or yourself to remind you when it was done. Um, I'm not writing the millage down because I know the Speedo doesn't work on this car and we'll probably have to look into it someday. But yeah, we're gonna be installing this one don't over tightening it don't go hulk mode just put some old oil on this and screw it on with the hand and it will be good to go so yeah this is just general maintenance right now uh, we don't know when it was last done so uh that's the first thing we're gonna do that we're gonna put some new spark plugs on it and uh then we'll get to the lowrider stuff i noticed that when i drove the car here it was making some weird noise so i did a test you hear that there's something like loose so I looked into it and basically what we got going on I noticed that this here is the one that causing noise this bolt here so something is you hear that hear that so then I went in here and I noticed that look you can just turn it with your hand so this adapter right here from the disc brakes is actually making noise and that's what I always say with lowriders you gotta check all the bolts everything because these cars they take a lot of stress and everything just loosens up on my 63 for example the engine mounts and stuff like that would just go loose so yeah we I'm gonna go through all the nuts and bolts of the suspension everywhere and uh, we're gonna tighten everything up again and make sure it's all good so I went through all these bolts here everything was loose really everything here the same thing and now I was like I'm gonna check these bolts here from the sway bar and look at this they, you, I can just take them off with my hand so uh, yeah what I was saying go through every single bolt on the car on the frame because uh because of the hydraulics stuff just gets loose like that went ahead and dropped the transmission pan right there and we changed the oil made a mess of course but it was needed because you can see the filter had some debris in it so it's good that we changed that um, I went through all the bolts too. This one was hand tight, didn't have a pin in it. Uh, all these ones were loosened up. This one was actually missing, so it probably already went flying somewhere on the road. So luckily I had one, dropped a new one in. All this is tight. I changed these ones, but the car is still locked up, so I can't get uh, the sway bar at the right angle so I'm gonna try to fix the hydros first because the car doesn't want to go down so I'm gonna fix that first so I have a better alignment here to drop the the missing rubber in that I have right here and then that one is changed too so um, yeah a lot of stuff was loose and it was really needed to go through everything but yeah we're gonna drop the the lift now I'm gonna clean up a little first because it's a mess and then I'll drop the lift, drop the new oil in it, drop some in the transmission too, and we can move on. 
So we dropped the car now. We did all the checks we had to do down there. Only that the car is still locked up, so I have to fix the hydraulics. But first, I'm gonna put some fresh oil in it. Today we got Supreme Classic ZDDP fortified. So that means it has zinc, which is good for these old engines. This is mineral oil too. Let's throw it in there and uh, we move on. So, went ahead and changed the, the coolant on it. And also, uh, I think I fixed a power steering leak somewhere. Other than that, I checked the spark plugs. They were pretty perfect. The perfect combustion and everything. So, uh, this engine is actually running really nice. Put some fresh oil on it. Fresh transmission oil too. Uh, now I'm going to move on to the hydraulic part of it because the car don't want to go down and something going on. So I built this setup in 2016. These uh, two pump setup, four dumps, four batteries. But my cousin uh, had an explosion of a battery which I never seen before but basically we had like acid everywhere. So right now it's running on three batteries but I think that maybe the acid got down on these uh, on these uh, wiring and all that and maybe that's why the car don't want to go down uh, we got four new batteries coming in here so I'm gonna start taking this apart taking all the batteries out and we'll start over we clean up and we'll look for spots that might be an issue we, it's pretty leak free everything is pretty good so this all held up well but uh, yeah we still have some issue somewhere that we got to figure out so we'll get into that now so we can lower the car and uh, fix the sway bar in the front and all that and get the hydraulics working again Okay, so this is what we got going on. This is how it was built. We got the pump and battery rack right here that is actually going through the frame of the car. All solid, same on the left and right, only that here we got all the solenoids for, uh, for the hydraulics or for the pumps. Uh, this will be for the rear pump and that will be for the front. Uh, I'm gonna measure these to make sure they are still good, which I think they are because my cousin isn't really a big switch heater or Doesn't play that much with hydraulics But yeah, I think I already found the issue here. So we had a lot of battery acid and I see that the grounds here are a little Corroded and that's the, the grounds for the dumps So probably that's why the, the dumps wasn't working anymore so yeah, I'm gonna go through all this, clean it all up, hook it back up, put new batteries in, and then uh, we'll see if it works again. I'll do a cleanup too because I see there's some stuff going on there. And yeah, we see some battery acid a little everywhere. The battery really exploded, I will show you guys. I still have a picture of it. I will put it behind this scene. Let's talk about the one thing that almost always fails on a lowrider or would be the cause of major issues, which is the solenoid. What happens is these ones get stuck on the closed circuit. The current goes through, your pump motor keeps running, your car overlocks and you start burning stuff up. So um, me, myself, I never burned one solenoid in my life. And I've been running cars with four batteries, six batteries, eight batteries. I mean, I've, I've been down that lane and I've never burned one because I always keep my batteries charged, leveled up. And what I also do, and a lot of people might disagree on this, but I run my systems on 12 volts and I run them on the main battery because your main battery is always charged with the alternator. So you always will have a solid connection on the switch side because what happens, the failure is on this actually. Your batteries get low if you run them on the system you're actually using the current for your for your 
pumps. So you will have a voltage drop or, or a power drop and then your, your connection, because basically this is a relay, this will give a current for so 12 volt or 24 and I will close the circuit to go to let the current go through to your pump. So if this one will drop on, on, on power, you will have uh, not a consistent strength to close the circuit and that's why it will start making sparks and that's when it wells up and stays stuck and you will have a, a bad solenoid. So basically I always run them on the, on the main battery and I never had issues. If you run them on the, on the setup, on the batteries of the trunk, so on 24 volts or 12, depending how you want to do it, um, always keep your batteries leveled up. And if you notice that your batteries are going low, don't play too much with it because you will probably end up with a stick solenoid and burn stuff up. I'm going to explain you guys now how we can measure these and know if they are failing because we actually put two or three on a row. So you, you have to check if there's one on the row failing because that's the reason we put two or three. If one fails, you still have a backup. But if, if they all start sticking and you're just running on one, then it gets dangerous. So let's check that one out. For years now, I've been running the Acumax 10A F1025, which is a pretty good solenoid. This one is off the shelf. Uh, how I was, I was saying, the, the your switch power will go on S, which would be 12 or 24, however you want to do it. And basically that will give current and close this circuit and then your power comes here from the batteries and goes to the pump. We actually line them up with uh, different ones, two or three, and that's basically just a security measurement, I would say. Uh, if one would fail, and stay stuck you still have others to rely on but how you can measure this like now there's no power on it so this circuit right here should be open that means no current should be going through so if you just measure it like this you will see the needle doesn't go up so that means this one is working this one is a used one but i think it's still good yep it's still good so it's not acting up so that's one way to tell if you have several ones you can just measure them like that and if one is failing, best to just change it so you still have your full security measurement. I would say that they all work well. So that's one way to tell. Um, other than that, make sure they have a good ground. That's very important too, because that's how your switch side will work too. They, they need a ground. So make sure you run that well on the battery rack or if you run it elsewhere, just make sure you got a really good ground. Best is always on a battery rack because that's what your main system is running on too but yeah that's basically how they work uh, that's how you can measure them really easy anybody can do it and that's it the solenoids were all good so we started mounting up the new batteries these are dynac 12 volt 105 amps we can find these in, in europe actually and they are the same size as a group 31 or 30 that we use in the US and they have two poles so you can basically choose which is pretty good um, other than that uh, I already tried it and it works I'm just missing the, the wire here and the bracket that my cousin probably gonna bring we probably left it at his house uh, but yeah I did a loop wire and I tried the setup and everything is working so basically the only issue we had here was because of the battery acid the, the ground for the dumps was acting up and that's why the car wouldn't go down um, if I had another issue I would explain uh, on the dumb side but basically the only thing that can go wrong here is either your your uh, solenoid part is uh, is broken or you have a ground issue which was the case here other than that it would work uh, this setup is pretty much hassle-free I mean it's a lay-and-play setup and and it's hoppos which is really good stuff never had issues with it no leaks nothing I mean this this car was built like six years ago the setup the whole setup part and uh, it's, it's still doing good I mean if you don't do crazy stuff with your car man this this will hold just need some some minimum maintenance I would say just wanted to show you guys the switch panel I did on this one with the wood grain the black diamonds I always run the ground right here so if there's an issue you can just pull it out some guys like to run them on the 
in the back in the trunk but i don't know i prefer under the seat and yeah some guys would say your carpet can get on fire and all that but if you got a really good ground what i do it's on the bolt of the seat right here but i also run a wire from underneath the car to the frame from so from the body or from the seat to the frame and that's what you need you always need a good ground because that's the cause that you will have sparks and fire okay so we're back under the car as you can see i changed those bushings left and right from the sway bar here common problem to the spring that goes through the through the arm we have it on both sides a little this will be for a next video i think uh We'll have to look into taking these apart and, and reinforcing them because this wasn't done. This is still all stock and with these heavy coils, I mean, it's it's doomed to happen, I would say. So yeah, this uh, will be for uh, for another episode. What I'm doing now, I'm checking the 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 colors on the on the cylinder. So I I jacked the car up and I'm checking on that actually that part right there those can come loose and that's when uh, you see on the videos that, that, that a cylinder goes through a hood or through a back window that's because those come loose and when you put pressure in the cylinder since it's not a not one piece anymore they will shoot out through the window or through the through the hood so it's important to check this what I do I just jack it on on the frame so uh, so the suspension goes down you can see this is all loosened up and then you can turn on it and put a, a wrench on it and tighten it up these are still good what surprises me because usually like i say these can come loose i'm gonna check this side now i'm gonna do all four just to make sure normally when you mount these you put them in a in a in a vise and you tighten that really really good before installing it and that's what we did but still I advise you guys to check this another thing you gotta check is these bolts from the cylinders they can get loose and get lost so that's a little check too I went through all that and it's all pretty good uh, I greased up all the, the ball joints and rotation parts and all that so that's all good to go too uh, checked all the lines the hydraulic lines if there's anything rubbing or but it's looking pretty pretty good didn't notice any bad things or so yeah I think uh, we're good to go we're gonna drop the lift take the car aside level up all the fluids and I'll show you guys how to how I level up the pumps in the back too and that way I think we're pretty much done for now I mean yeah, we definitely need some work on them suspension arms, but and probably change all the bushings while we're at it. But yeah, that will not be for this one. Next time, I think we'll go through that. Gotta check with my cousin too. She's sounding real good. Gonna check the levels now again. See if we got some leaks and we're good to go. To level the hydraulic pumps, what I do is I'll just take a zip tie, cut the end off so you don't have that sloppy part of it. I mark where the where the tank is. I mean the limit of the tank, and basically you have to have three quarters. So you just drop it in. There, I'm there. Take it out. And you just check the level. We see it's three quarters, so that's good. Good to go. Went ahead and put some fresh white wall tires on it. These are Maxis. These is the ones we can get in Europe pretty easy. Yeah, the old ones were a little shot. I will show you guys a picture of it. all right so here we have it it's ready to go ready to rock the summer fresh tires fresh maintenance everything was checked we got
fresh batteries in the trunk no leaks all looking clean we got the plaque in the back just gotta clean the blue of the tires got the switches working too now that it has fresh batteries it it goes good so yeah it's looking good it's hard to see it because it's in the shadow now but it has metal flakes in it when the sun hits it it has like a nice blue pearly flake on it you know now that it has fresh batteries it goes well you know if you hit the switch nice reaction right there even in the back it's bouncy you know but that's how it works oh yeah she ready she want to go all right guys after a test drive we checked all the levels again that we were sure that everything is good and yeah we changed the tires too we went through the regular maintenance also the low rider maintenance so yeah this car is ready to hit the streets again my cousin will be enjoying it this summer if you guys got any specific stuff you want to ask or you want to see being done on the videos or something just put it down in the comment section i will check it out and i will include it in one of the next videos so yeah thank you for watching i hope you guys enjoyed it like subscribe share do what you gotta do and i'll see you next time